Welcome to the Statistic in DD YouTube channel. My favorite programming language R got a native base R pipe operator in its latest release and I think that's really a huge milestone and I'm keen to hear and read about your views on this. So in 2014 the Magrid R package introduced a pipe operator. It was a huge success. It has been widely adopted in the R community. A lot of code has been written using the pipe and now seven years later um, a native pipe was included in base R. And this is really a, a rare event that an idea from an external package gets adopted by base R. So it's a huge milestone and a shout out to the Magritte package authors in particular Stefan Milton Bache, Hadley Wickham and Lionel Henri. But I think it's also a success for the whole Tidyverse team. Now I don't want to get into any arguments Tidyverse versus data table for example so I just like to note that data table achieved a similar milestone a couple of years ago um, in 2016 when data tables internal fast gradix order was adopted by the R project and became the default sort algorithm in R version 3.3. So a shout out to data tables package authors Matt Dowell and Arun Srinivasan and note that there are a lot of contributors to data table as well. Right, but back to the native pipe. So what is it? Let's talk a little bit about it. The basic form is that f of x can be written as x and then apply the function f. So a simple example, we can look at the infamous empty cars data set and use the head function and for the sake of this presentation I just display the first two rows of data using the n equals 2 parameter and we can rewrite this and achieve exactly the same result using the pipe starting out with the empty cars data set using the pipe and then apply the head function with the parameter n equals 2. So that's a very simple example for the basic form and I'd like to show you two use cases where using the pipe makes a bit more of a difference than in this simple example. So the first use case is related to nested parentheses and we'll build this up slowly so we could, at the row, we could take a look at the row names of the empty cars data set and then I could apply the summary function to the row names of empty cars but it turns out the output is not very useful. Length 32, I already knew that class character, mode character, not very useful. Uh, it turns out it's more useful to apply the summary function to a factor type than to a character vector. So we could end up with typical base R code like this, starting out from the empty cast data set, looking at the row names, converting to a factor, applying the summary function, and then applying the head function to limit the results that are displayed. So nested parentheses, we could talk about readability. We have to read it from the inside to the outside or from right to left, which I don't find very intuitive. Also note that the parameter n equals 2 belongs to the head function, but they are torn apart in this notation. So it's not very readable, I would say. So let's see what the pipe can do for us in this case. So the typical base R code with the nested parentheses on the left and with the pipe we could rewrite this code this way and now we can conveniently read it from top to bottom. So we start out with the empty cast data set, look at the row names, um, convert to factor, apply the summary function and then apply the head function. And now note that the parameter n equals 2 is right next to the head function and not torn apart as in the code on the left. So maybe it takes a bit getting used to if you haven't used the pipe before seeing these empty parentheses, but always the pipe inserts the object that was calculated on the previous line of code. So I hope this code makes sense to you and we can see that the pipe can help us avoid nested parentheses and improve readability of our code. The second use case that I want to show you is related to a coding style I also see quite frequently in R and that is storing intermediate results in objects or in temporary objects in some cases. So to make this easier to follow I'm using exactly the same example as before only this time I avoid the nested parentheses by storing intermediate results in objects. 
So I look at the row names of the empty cars dataset and store this in the vector cars. Then I convert to a factor, and then I create another object. I could have used the same object name again, but now I create a summary object. Um, and then I look at the head of the summary output and print that to the console. So I get the same result as before. I have not used nested parentheses. Maybe this code is more readable because we can follow line by line what is happening. Um, but we have cluttered our global environment with several objects that we may need to um, clean up at some place at some time. Um, yeah, and the code is also not very efficient because we have all these assignments, which means memory operations. So we can contrast this to the same pipe that we saw in the previous slide. And this time you can note that no assignment is done at all here. I just wanted to see a result in the console and I get this result without even creating an object. So I don't need to remove any objects after the fact. Right, so these were two use cases for the pipe. And now we could wonder how is this pipe operator implemented in base R? And here the quote function comes in quite handy. It captures an R expression and returns the expression without evaluating it. So we can see how this pipe notation for our first simple example, just applying the head function to the empty cars data set is captured and the result is head empty cars. So we get back the original notation that we may all be used to. Um, and it means that the pipe notation is immediately translated or seen as an equivalent way of writing this code. We can also use the quote function um, and apply it to the longer pipe that we used on the previous slides. And you see what is internally captured and stored as an R expression is exactly the nested parenthesis call that we talked about. So this could lead us to the assumption that um, there's very little overhead associated with the base R pipe because it is treated as exactly the same way as this um, notation that we see here at the bottom. This is not the case for the Magritte pipe as it lives in an external package. It needs an, a function call to be evaluated. So now we could assume that the base R pipe should, sh pipe should be more efficient and faster. But when dealing with runtimes of codes, we shouldn't rely on assumptions, but measure. So that's what I did here. I'm using the bench package and we benchmark the base R approach and the McGritter approach. So the code is essentially the same. And the only difference is just um, the different implementations of the pipe. And we get the results and you see that the differences are not very large. It's just a small difference, but indeed the base R implementation is executed faster than the Magrit R um, implementation. So now I'd really like to hear your views and we can think a little bit about what this will mean um, for adoption in the future. My take would be that we will see widespread use of the base R native pipe. Um, an advantage is that it doesn't need a dependency on an, on an external package. Um, so that, that's a huge plus and also the efficiency, no overhead or lower overhead um, is also a plus. But my take is also that I don't think um, the Magritte pipe is going away. A lot of code has been written that relies on this. Um, so for backwards compatibility, I think it will, it will be around for a while. Also note that um, there are some use cases where the Magritte pipe is more flexible and um, an implementation using the base R pipe would be more difficult. For example, with the Magritte pipe, you can refer to the data object um, that you're piping using the dot notation. Um, and this is useful when the data is not the first argument of the function that you're piping to. And this is uh, not as straightforward to achieve with the base R pipe. It doesn't support this dot notation. Also note that the Magritte package has a few other pipes. I see them very rarely used, um, but for some use cases, other types of, of the pipe may be helpful. So this is also found in the Magritte package. Also note that this speed comparison would have been quite different not so long ago. At the end of 2020, Magritte received the 
2.0 update and the pipe was rewritten in C so it has become much faster and also the backtrace is cleaner now so that's a recent improvement and compared to older versions of the pipe um, it got much faster. Right, um, this was just about it. I just want to give a shout out to Michael Barrowman who already wrote half a year before the official release about the new base pipe and even did some benchmarks using the development version of R and also the Jumping Rivers blog was very quick writing about the new R release now. Um, the base R pipe is not the only significant change in R4.1. There's also improved support for anonymous functions, a shortcut that wasn't there before, so maybe I'll talk about this in another video. You can check it out in the release notes um, or help type help start in the console and click on news to access the release notes. Anyway, all the best for your R projects and your data analysis. I hope you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if yes. Um, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.